This is Women's Tech Radio, a show on the Jupiter Broadcasting Network interviewing interesting women in technology, exploring their roles and how they're successful in technology careers. I'm Paige. And I'm Angela. Angela, today we're going to interview uh, at Linux Fest Northwest Live. We are doing an interview with Scarlett Clark. She's a developer on the KDE project and also works for Kubuntu. But before we get into the interview, I want to tell you about Patreon.com. You can go to Patreon.com forward slash today to support Women's Tech Radio and all the other shows on the Jupiter Broadcasting Network. Go to JupiterBroadcasting.com and see if there's another show that you might want to listen to in addition to Women's Tech Radio. Again, go to Patreon.com forward slash today. And we got started with this week's episode by asking Scarlett what she does with KDE and Kubuntu. I am a developer for Kubuntu, so I do a lot of the package packaging for the software applications for the users to be able to easily install and whatnot. And then um, on the other side of the spectrum, I'm also I created wrote uh, all the code to automate uh, job creation and job building for KDE's uh, continuous integration system which is, uh, it builds the software packages and then tests them to make sure that, that it's functional. And then uh, after they all turn green like they're supposed to, then <laughs> they're ready to release to distributions like Ubuntu. <laughs> and I also uh, went the extra step and we are now uh, testing for OS X and Windows will be coming next. Oh, wow. Yeah, all the code's already in there. It's just uh, figuring uh, Windows is a little more complicated because uh, getting dependencies, you can't tell the continuous integration system to, hey, go to this website, download this file, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and use it as a dependency. So it gets a little more complicated. But once we sort that out, um, Windows will also be supported with KDE. Wow, I had no idea you guys were going for that. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Before the you did this project, was there not test coverage for KDE? Or? They had a very old system, and it was not uh, reliable. Okay. And it was also the job creation was all manual. Oh wow! And um, yeah, and, and OS X and Windows were not supported. <laughs> yeah. Was that so? Did you? That's pretty deep in the weeds, like building, testing, oh, yes. and all that jazz for such a big, robust piece of software. Yeah. Was that something that you just like? woke up one morning and decided to do like how did you end up where you are actually Valerie the the gal you just spoke to she um knew they do this season of KDE um and it generally targets students obviously I'm not a student (laughs) but um this project didn't have any anybody grabbing at it and she just asked me are you interested in DevOps and I'm like I'm interested in everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um she uh introduced me to Ben Cooksey the the main sysadmin guy and got rolling and I had no idea what I was getting into when I got into it mm-hmm. so I ended up learning uh, Groovy, uh, Python and Java on the fly I had never <laughs> I, had, I had taken a few classes but that was years ago in, sure. in university yeah. What but, had you done prior to that? What Was anything prior to that technology related other than the several um, classes you mentioned? Uh, a couple well a long time ago I was IT Oh, okay. But I um, had not had any real-world experience coding. Ah. So this is my first real-world experience coding, and, and I love it. Mm-hmm. So. so you went from no coding mm-hmm. to developing a new test suite for KDE. Yes, the back end. <laughs> so how was how was that journey? Well, like how did how did you go through that? Because like learning that many languages and that much at theory first, on the fly. Yes, at first it was very overwhelming, and I just stared at the blank sheet, going, "Oh no, oh no!" But then <laughs> I just bits and pieces at a time, and things started coming together, and then, oh, that makes sense, and then. It just all came together, and and then when the final result, we just went live two days ago, and it was that's awesome. smooth. How long did that project take for you? It was several months. It was well, two. only months. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Actually, yeah, uh, I surprised a lot of people with with the 
how fast it gets. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so so doing all that and learning all that, like what were there were there like <laughs> awesome resources that you were using? Like was it the community? Did you have like books? Online were, courses yeah. or yeah. What? Um Google was good. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. So I have I have a lot of young ladies who are or ladies who are trying to get into tech and their biggest holdback is like uh, learning how to Google the right things. Like, did you find that was difficult at first? Like, knowing how to re- ask I've the right questions. I've been question? using Google since they were in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But like asking the right uh, tech question. Like, how do you? Did yeah. Like you sometimes have, you don't know what you don't know. I know. That's that's actually something that that you have to develop over time mm-hmm. because I've I've learn to <laughs> figure out what to ask yeah. and how to ask it. And sometimes you don't get it right the first time mm-hmm. and you just have to reword it and re, um, it, it can, that can be challenging. Um, yeah. but, uh, especially the, that is just it. When I first started the project, I didn't know what I was looking for. So I actually branched off in wrong directions at first Right. So I had a few setbacks because um, I wanted to go uh, in, via Docker, which is the new cool technology. Yep. But mm-hmm. it wasn't with the OS X and Windows that ended up being wasted time because mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't, you, you, you won't get a native builds. Right. Because Docker is Linux. So yeah. That didn't quite pan out. But it was fun learning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's always good to add new new stack to your your brain. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something will resonate and help you learn something else. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me the story of like why you were in IT before and then you weren't and now you are again. Oh, that's a story of I uh, had to give up my career to follow my husband to another state and I could not recover. Oh, that's too bad. Is it well? You have now. I have, Though. well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Was it really difficult for you diving back in, like, afterwards, or did it just kind of re-spark that, like, the, we, I had a guest who talks about, like, kind of the mental stimulation of, of being in this technical field. And yeah, stuff, like. um, I've been a Linux uh, advocate user since 1998. I had my big stack of Red Hat floppy disks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I have always wanted to contribute and I could never really find my way in. It's it's a little you know it's a it's a tight knit community, <laughs> but I finally found my my way in with Kubuntu and mm-hmm. Jonathan Riddell. He just stepped up and you want to learn how to package? I'm like sure, and he just showed me the ropes, and I've just just been writing the <laughs> uh, cloud since. How did you get in touch with Jonathan? Like, what was that? Um, I knew Valerie from several, you know, mailing groups and stuff, and and she saw that I was doing documentation for KDE. That's actually an easy way in is doing documentation. Oh yeah. And then she um, introduced me to Jonathan, and so. What is uh, I think we have some people who are just getting started. What does doing documentation mean? Like, what does that look like? It's uh, the easiest way is to. Um, start with like wiki it's much simpler than doc books which is um, you have to pretty well know xml and and the layout and everything but the wiki it's pretty much just plain text and you just you find an app that you really love and just use it and and figure out use cases of well somebody might want to do this and then you just instruct them how to do that and just build on it and it's that's the easiest way to really get your foot in the door and it's it's pretty simple because you just well you figure out ways that you use the application and then just write about it mm-hmm. yeah I think especially as a, a newer user of an application sometimes you have an even more valuable input for that because oh, yeah. you have just learned it you yes. know where the pain points are mm-hmm. yes yep. that is uh, in my current conversion and to Linux is it's very refreshing for the Linux action show audience to hear this new user perspective. Yes, absolutely. And and uh, a lot of times developers don't even think of, of things that a user would try or want to do with their application. So right. it's a good way to also give feedback to the developers because I know I worked on K-Mail uh, documentation and there was a lot of things that I ran into and I, I would talk to the developer and how do you do this? And they're like, oh, well... I need to fix that. Thank you. <laughs> did Did you find being primarily in open source that like reaching out to the developer that was like actually a welcome thing? 
Mm, that mm, not generally, but with KDE, they are surprisingly very open and and very very nice. Yeah. I've I've just felt really at home mm-hmm. with KDE. It was it's been a nice breath of fresh air. <laughs> so you know, don't give up looking for the right community. You'll find it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's I I've, I've been looking for a long time, and I just stumbled into it and didn't expect it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So are you from around here? I live in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Do you always come to Linux Fest and are there any other this festivals? Is, this is my first that you one. Go to? Um, but I will be from now on coming to yes. Linux Fest. I know, isn't it great? Yes. <laughs> but I go to Academy each year, which is in various places in Europe. This year we're going to Spain. Oh fun. And then in September I'll be going to a random meeting which is in Switzerland for wow. KDE. That's so, great. Yeah. Awesome. What an exciting so you're in Portland. Mm-hmm. Is the rest of the KDE team in Portland? No, KDE is all around the world. How do you guys uh, work together? Like, what kind of tools do you use IRC. to keep in touch? I yeah, live in IRC. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, do you use like version control to work together? Git. Or Git. Mm-hmm. Which is, of course, from <laughs> Linux. Minus. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's your what's your uh, stack of tools look like right now? I always like to find out what other developers are using. Like uh, I use uh, Eclipse because it's the only uh, good groovy plugin that I could find, mm-hmm. um, and I use KDevelop for the Python work. Okay, cool. And uh, do you have a, a favorite hardware, like laptop, tablet that you're into, or because KDE is so nice and friendly, it works on just about everything. Yeah, I have um, I have Kubuntu on my desktop, my laptop, and then that well, my phone has you know Android. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice, very cool. So I guess last question: mm-hmm. What are you the most excited about about what's coming down the pipe for technology, like um, either with Linux or with just general stuff? We are going to be porting our apps and onto Android. So that's oh wow. Big. oh, wow. That's exciting. That's what the whole Switzerland trip's about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be great. KDE on your Android. Thank you for listening to this episode of Women's Tech Radio. Don't forget you can email us, wtr at jupiterbroadcasting.com, or you can use the contact form that is over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at HeyWTR. You can also find us on iTunes or any of your other RSS feeds. The RSS feed is available on the website at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And if you have a minute, leave us a review or some feedback. We'd love to hear from you.